ね、その前ぐらいに Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing on this thankful Thursday? Let me know who's here. I see I have a couple of viewers. Let me know who's viewing. Say hello in the comments. Let me know what's going on. Who's, who's here? I need to put my phone up here somewhere. Excuse me, y'all. Go. Who's here? Can y'all hear me? Hello, 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 hello. How are y'all doing? Hey, Isabella, how are you? How was your day? Hello, hello. Y'all, how they say, come on in. Come on in the room. We got a juicy topic. A juicy topic tonight. I am so glad to be back. So glad. I'm glad your day was good. Good. Mine was pretty good. I had an eventful day. But nonetheless, I'm thankful to even have a day to have. <laughs> Y'all, come on in the room. Who's here? Let me know in the comments. I can't see. Um, I don't have my, my young adults here, so I don't know how to move around this thing like that without <laughs> feel doing something. Um disconnecting something so share the live let people know we're on please share it this is an interactive live i love interaction i love it love it love it come on in the room it's been a while since i have done pc thursday night live and i have missed it god started giving me topics few months back so I knew it was gearing up I knew it was gearing up so I am excited to be back come on in the room we're gonna give it a few more minutes and we're gonna jump right in I won't be on here long but we have a juicy topic juicy topic juicy 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 come on in the room people come on in the room Share the 
the video that people know we're on. We'll get started in about four minutes. 8.05. 8.05. Come on in the room. I would play music, but Facebook be um um like stopping your video or cutting it off or or something. So I'm scared to play music. I guess I could play some jazz, but with no words. I'm scared to do that, so. I'll just go without it so we can figure out what their community standards are. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. <laughs> you gonna come on in and have a sit down? Huh? You gonna watch it? No. If you want to, it's up to you. Yeah. Have to, young people. Come on in the room. We got a juicy topic. Talking about envy. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I got my notes up. A lot of people shy away from these topics. And I'm glad you all decided to come on anyway. I don't have, how do I get, I don't see all the comments. Hopefully it'll keep moving. It'll keep moving. So I'm looking, y'all. I don't even know how to make this big. Oh, that's small. Come on in the room, people. Come on in the room. Now we're going to get started in about one minute, 8.05. I'm just going to jump in. Yeah, most people, people normally dart in and out as they're busy. Some people put it on so they can hear it. I don't care how they do it as long as they get this information and they can recognize, you know, some of these behaviors and emotions and stuff begin to heal from it do the work they need to do to not operate in the spirit of envy some people don't realize that they are some do and don't care nonetheless we're going to talk about it i hope y'all can hear me good enough I am glad you guys decided to join me. So it is 8.05 and I am going to get started. People can pop on as they remember that I'm on or they can watch the replay, whatever it suits them. But I want to welcome you all to PC Ministries Live, Thursday Night Live, where we deal with what you feel from the inside out. I am not coming to you because I have arrived and I have all the answers. I'm coming to you out of mere experience um, anointing and calling of God. The calling of God on my life is to help people deal with what they feel from the inside out. And I have a tight but right ministry approach. So I want to thank you all for joining in, tuning in, sharing the video, thanking you all for your um, continuous support and encouragement and motivation as I branch off into my PC ministries and my transformation coaches, which is coaching which is taking off. I'm just in awe of God and he is blowing my mind, but I'm humbled by the opportunity to pour into people's lives, which is what I love to do. I love to do. So with that being said, thank you all for tuning in and we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about some envy tonight. Envy, envy. Those of you that are listening, put your definition of what you think envy is in the comments. I would love to see. I love interaction. 
so hopefully y'all want to interact tonight. But put your definition of what you think envy is. Don't Google. Don't Google. Just put your definition of what you think envy is in the comments so I can see what we're dealing with or what we're talking about. So go ahead and put it in there. What do you think definite as a matter of fact, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the question down there. What is your definition of envy? See. Oof. That's a good one, Mary Lee. It is definitely jealousy. That's that's one definition. That is one definition. Y'all give me some more. What is your definition of envy? I want to make sure I get these comments going straight. Somebody said jealousy. That can make you be envious. It definitely can. Anybody else? But when you get it, just put it in the comments. All right. So I'm going to go into my notes. Envy is a powerful emotion and can either motivate you or it can make you resentful. And a lot of times when we allow it to motivate us, it could be a good thing. You know, envy is not always a bad thing. Um, oh, that's a good one. Self-hate. Oh, Pastor Diana said covet, compet. Yes, all of that is a definition of envy. I'm glad y'all are putting it in there because we don't, sometimes we don't see envy as self-hatred or jealousy or covetedness or competition. We don't even recognize it as that because we'll say quickly, well, I don't hate myself or I'm not jealous of him or her or I don't covet nobody's stuff. I don't compete. I know who I am. We say that. We say that, but then we exhibit behaviors and attitudes you know, like I put in my post earlier, do you have that eye roll or that face scrunch um, spirit on your life where you see somebody doing good and you, mm, or you just kind of, you won't know, uh, you know, you're the only one that knows you're doing that. But a lot of times we don't do it in front of other people. And then if we do do it in front of other people, we, it, we're now we're sowing discord. You know, now we're trying to impress upon someone else what you feel. And that might not even have anything to do with anybody else. So like I said a few minutes ago, envy is a powerful emotion that can either motivate you or make you resentful. Okay? Envy. I looked up this definition, y'all. And this definition said that envy is pain. Pain at the sight of another person's good fortune, Another person's success, their happiness, their beauty, their shape, their body, their marriage, their possessions. It's pain. It ca Envy causes you pain at the sight of someone else's good fortune. Someone else's success and happiness. Pain? Like, when someone is doing good or someone looks good, or someone drives good, or they live good, or they finally got married, or they have a beautiful shape, a beautiful body, beautiful children, good hair, whatever the reason is, it causes you pain? It pains you? <laughs> How do you explain that? How would you explain that? What someone else has, or what someone else does, or how someone looks, or how they carry themselves, or their success, their success, and their um, happiness and all of that. Why does it pain you? Why does it make you sick? And that's what we want to talk about tonight. Why does it make you sick? Now, you don't have to tell everybody that you have envy or that you are envious of other people because nine times out of ten, we're not going we're not going to reveal that. We're not. But hopefully, in the privacy of your own home, wherever you're watching and listening from, you'll take heed to some of this and acknowledge or take accountability for the areas of your life that you may have envy or that we may say something tonight that you may recognize as envy on your part. And that's what this is all about. Okay? The Bible includes envy as a work of the flesh 
and a sinful nature. Did y'all hear that? A work of the flesh and a sinful nature. If you want to read more about that, go to Galatians 5 and read what it says and what you don't inherit as a work of the flesh and a sinful nature. I don't want to get into that because that's a whole nother Bible study right there. Envy is an emotion which occurs when a person is jealous of another's or they either desire or wish the other person lacked it, lacks it. So because you don't have it or because you didn't do what you're supposed to do to get it or you tried it and it didn't work or you have a yearning or a desire for it and it just haven't happened for you yet, you wish that other person didn't have it too. If you find yourself doing that, ask yourself why. Ask yourself, like, why do you feel like that? Like, why someone else having something or someone else's success or whatever it is you're envious about? Ask yourself, why? What did that person do to you? Like, ask yourself that question. And if you find yourself like that, ask yourself, why? Why? Envy is one of the most potent causes of unhappiness. So is it safe to say that because you are envious of another person, you are really unhappy? That's what y'all think. You think a person who is envious is really unhappy themselves? Don't let me do all the talking. Y'all talk to me. What do you think? You think a person who is envy, envious is truly happy on the inside? They may try to act like they are. They may try to put on this persona that they are. But if you are operating with an envy attitude or envious behavior, you're not happy. I don't care how you try to dress it up. You're not happy. Good. At, yeah, you are. You are absolutely right, Isabel. Yes, they are. They are not happy. And you can try to act like it and dress it up like you are. But if you are exhibiting envious at an, an envious attitude, or every time somebody walk by you, it, it it lock you up, or you can't stand the sight of someone's happiness. Like the definition say, it's it someone's happiness or success. It gives you pain. Is it that serious? And if it is that serious, why? Why? And I'm only saying these things because if you recognize any of this within yourself, you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. You got to figure out why you're like that. What that comes from. What weakness or insecurity or do you have that makes you have this type of behavior or attitude or secret envy or secret, you know, what makes you do that? Let's talk about two types of envy. There's a malicious envy and there's a benign envy. And malicious envy is when you have an unpleasant emotion that causes you to want to bring down another person. In, is this, this emotion is so unpleasant that you will try to bring this person down. Or the Bible also says, talks about sowing discord, even at your own expense. That's how malicious it is. That's how unpleasant this envy is. Malicious. If you find yourself trying to make somebody look bad so you can look good, that's malicious envy. Even at your own expense. Why? Why? If you find yourself, you know, talking about somebody else or you know, sowing discord, you know, making, try to get people to change their mind about somebody else or making comments or a suggestive type of sounds. You know how sometimes somebody walk through, you know how we do, lady. Mm. Oh, we, we kind of, oh, we cut an eye and look at somebody like, that is suggestive. That is to, to change somebody's viewpoint about someone else or something or something that someone said 
or anything that is it's it's discord you're trying to change somebody's perception about something or somebody's mind about something you know and you're trying to control that by sewing that or or with your mannerisms or your voice or your eye roll or your face scrunch that's that's what that is and why why do we do this have y'all ever seen this done have you seen this done have you participated in it? Have you done it? I've done it. I've done it. That's malicious envy. Malicious envy, again, is an unpleasant emotion that causes you to want to bring somebody else down, even if it's at your own expense. Benign envy is when you recognize someone that is better off than you or has more than you or better than you, you know, what have you, but it inspires you. It inspires you to do just as good. It inspires you to get on your game. It inspires you to boss up or level up. You're watching, but it, expi it, it inspires you. That's benign envy. Now, this type of envy is still a negative emotion because it still feels kind of unpleasant, but it can provide emulation, motivation and positive thoughts and admiration that's benign so if it's this this envy is not necessarily a bad envy if you allow it to motivate you not look at them and you don't want them to have it or you don't like the fact that they have it so you just downplay it or you know whatever it just gives you pain instead of it giving you pain it motivates you in a sense well if she can do it i can do it if she got it, I can get it. So you just watch and you see what they're doing. You see how the steps they're taking. If they're putting something out, you're reading it. If they're putting a the video out, you're watching it. You know, if they're doing a book, you're buying it. You know, but envy will make you not because you. And a lot of times when we envy other people, we miss out on a lot of stuff because they can have a key or they can have something that you need. But because you can't get past what they look like, or the fact that, well, I minister too. I, I can do that too. Or I can look like that too. Okay, well, we didn't say you couldn't. Go on and do it. But you envious because they're doing it and you're not. What that got to do? That caused you pain? Because somebody doing something you can do? Go on and do it, boo-boo. I didn't say go on and do it, sus. Envy can display a lack of confidence. Yes, ma'am, Miss Marcy. It's exactly what it displays. A lack of confidence. Poor self-esteem, a lack of all of that in you. And we don't see that for that, you know. And we have to, again, PC Ministries, deal with what you feel from the inside. And we want to talk about if you recognize these behaviors or this emotion or this attitude within you, ask yourself why. God will take you to the beginning of why you're like that or what, what, what the root cause of that is for you. So, again... If benign envy um, is dealt with correctly, if you can, if you can, this type of envy, if you can use it to motivate you or encourage you, you know, to do better or get on your ball game or level up or boss up, then it can af positively affect your future by motivating you to be a better person and succeed. But if we don't deal with it the way we should, it turns into malicious envy. And we don't want that. It's a painful emotion. So if you find yourself looking at someone else um, and getting upset because they're doing something that you desire to do, instead of making allowing an envy attitude or envy to set in, ask yourself, well, why am I not doing that? Or what do I have to do to do that? It's nothing wrong with you doing what somebody else does if that's what you're supposed to be doing. It's nothing wrong with that. But when you, someone else is doing something that you think you can do or you don't think you can do, now we want to bring them down or give them the side eye or not support them or not go to their stuff or not look at their stuff or try to talk about whatever it is you do because it's something that you're lacking within yourself. 
it, you have to ask yourself why you have to and you don't deserve to be locked up in envy and I chose this topic tonight because when I spoke at the Women's Empowerment Brunch a couple of weeks ago at Zethra um, Radon's um, Beyond Beautiful Women's Empowerment Brunch where we were talking about the topic was living an abundant life and in my session I talked about um, the little foxes that spoil the vine and I replaced foxes with boxes and I gave everybody little boxes and I wanted them to write down the things that was holding them back, that was keeping them from living an abundant life. So in a sense, you're in a box and this box has you, has you restricted and it's placing limitations on you because you can't move freely because you're in a box. And envy was in one of those boxes. I had the women write them down and throw them in my box. And I went through each box. It was like, poof, it's quite a few boxes, over 50 boxes. And I went through each box. As a matter of fact, this right here, this is all these pages. I don't know if y'all can see that. Front and back, this is what was written on those boxes. I wrote down everything because I wanted to pray over and I wanted to see what we're dealing with so I can, PC Ministries can address some of it, can give tools, can pray over it, all of that. So um, envy was in one of the boxes. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna talk about that one. And we need to talk about it. If somebody was um, woman enough to put that in their box and they don't want to envy anymore, it's worth talking about. Because again, that's something that was restricting them. That's something that was limiting them from living an abundant life. And we all desire to live an abundant life. So I also have one here, um, along with envy, and I think Pastor Diana put her definition of um, envy down there as covet and com competition. Well, I also have covetousness in my notes and I want to give you the definition of covetousness. Covetousness is having or showing a great desire to possess something belonging to somebody else. To covet is to yearn to possess or have. So your, your neighbor has a beautiful home and you wish you had it. But it turns into like a, a yearning, malicious type desire to where you're not really happy for them, but you really want what they have. That's called coveting. Coveting. Coveting is a consuming, highly competitive, evil attitude, which will likely lead to you doing something that you shouldn't do saying something that you shouldn't say, behaving in a way that you shouldn't be behaving in. When you have a covetedness or an envy, um, envy type of aura or behavior or attitude, this is what it turns into. You're highly competitive. It consumes you. And we don't, you don't want to be like that. Like, why is my neighbor's good fortune, beautiful home and grass and whatever it is, why does that consume you so much? If you want it, do it. If you want it, go get it. You want your grass green and make get get your grass green. Go over there and ask them who they use to fertilize their grass and get the same fertilizer. What's wrong with that? If you like what somebody has, go get you one. But don't get mad because you're not in a position to. Why should somebody stop doing what they're doing because you envious or you can't. That, that's, that don't make sense. Why does it pain you? Why is it painful to you? You have to ask yourself that. You have to ask yourself that. Exodus talks about, in Exodus uh, chapter 20, it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, their maid servant, man servant, his ox, his ass, or anything that your neighbor has. Now, neighbor not necessarily a next door neighbor, but it's anybody. You shouldn't be coveting what they have. And when you covet, it's you're designed to have their possessions and it's driving you so much that it's making you envious. You know, and you want it so bad 
that you're willing to do anything and make them look bad to get it, you know, what have you. And we don't have to live like that. So again, we're dealing with what you feel from the inside out. If you find yourself in this type of behavior um, or attitude, ask yourself why. Like, why am I doing this? You know, pray about it and ask yourself, why Why do I act like this? Or why when this person walks by or this person is up or I look on there and I see Paula on this PC Ministries live, it makes me sick. Why? <laughs> uh, when I look up in the praise and worship and I see Marcy up there singing and she's worshiping God and has a beautiful voice and I sing too. So... It pains me to see her up there. Why? She's not doing nothing to me or against me because she may be doing something that I know I should be doing or doing something that I haven't asked to be. Oh, what have you? Whatever your reasons are, I guess the the question that you have to ask us, we have to ask ourselves is why does it pain me? Why does it make me sick? Why does it upset me? And only you know that it does because, you know, envy can sit in church. Envy sits in the pulpit. Envy sits in the in the in the pews. Envy sits right beside you, and you 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 don't know that somebody is envying you because they may not show it. So if you're that person that can hold that envy on the inside of you and let it eat you up from the inside, what good is that doing to the next person? Why are you doing that to yourself? Envy is just like you drinking poison and got your eye cut at that person and you hope they die. You drinking the poison, but you hope they die. That's what it's doing to you. Yeah, that's that low key envy. Exactly. That exactly. That secret. That secret envy. And what is that doing to the person that you're envying? It's it's hurting you. It's 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 tor giving you turmoil on in your heart, in your inner being. So if you find yourself doing that. Ask yourself, why? Let's get to the bottom of why you do that. You know, why? And again, we all have have secret, have done, have, 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 have had envy toward other people before. We all have. I'm not going to sit here and act like I've never envied somebody and, and was a little jealous. Yes, I sure have. Have been. I sure have. I sure have. But I got to a point to where it just didn't make sense. Why was I jealous of this person? And it, it jealousy really shows an unhealed version of yourself. You know, you're jealous because they're either doing something that you wish to do. Um, they have something that you wish you had. Or, you know, what have you. What, whatever the nature of the jealousy is or the envy is, it's not about that person. It's about you. And like I said, we all have envy have envied others at some point, but a strong person will use the feelings of envy as a motivator. I was able to change it from, in, you know, like, okay, I, I'm wrong. Like, this girl ain't did nothing to me. You know, um, I don't have a reason to envy her or talk bad about her or shun her or wish bad on her because she's doing something that she wants to do or she's doing something that I wish to do. I don't have a reason to make them look bad or hate on them. I can watch them and use it as a motivator. And that's what a strong person would do when they find themselves envious. It's, it's that benign envy. Use it as a motivator. A weak person will suppress, suppress their envy deep inside. And when that happens, it usually goes along with other piles of suppressed emotions you got already down there so you just got a pot of stressed and suppressed emotions down there that you're just gonna rather than you deal with it you're gonna suppress it and keep it on the inside along with all the other messed up emotions you got and i don't know if y'all can do the hand wave but raise your hand if you know somebody like this don't put no names down there but raise your hand if, if you know somebody, let me see if I can do me a hand. Raise your hand if you know somebody that's that's like this. Oh, I can't. That's going to take too long for me to do a hand, y'all. But y'all put the hand emoji down there. If you know somebody that's, that's envious. 
And you've seen people operating like that. People dealing with envy often have a negative self-perception on how to achieve their own true happiness. <laughs> That's right, Isabella, put that hand up there. Yes, people who deal with envy more times than none have a, <laughs> I see you, Marcy, nine times out of ten have a negative self-perception on how to achieve their own happiness. Again, when I began this, I said, one of the definitions up there was, it said that envy is one of the most potent causes of unhappiness. So a person who deals in envy and just allows themselves to continually deal in envy is a really sad person. They're really, truly unhappy. Now, they won't admit that because they put up a facade that they're not and they're this, this. But a person that can hate on another person that has nothing to do with them, that ain't done nothing to them, only because they're doing something that you wish to do or you wish you had or they look a certain way and you wish you did or you fat and they thin and you want to be thin or they got long hair and you got short hair and you can't get your hair to grow so you want to hate them. Whatever the issue, I'm being a little funny, but whatever the issue may be, what does that have to do with you? Why do you have to hate on that person? Why do you have to be envy, envious of that person? Why not admire that person? Why not? Why not use it to motivate you? Somebody's doing something that you wish to do. Do it. You can do it too. Somebody driving something that you wished you could drive. Okay, well, go buy you one. If you can't, do what you need to do to set yourself up so you can. I mean, you y'all see what I'm talking about? Or maybe ask them for help. Well, you know, Marcia, that's a whole nother, because we, we're too prideful for that. That's going to really show that I don't know what I'm doing. We can't do that. I will. Like, girl, where you got them shoes from? <laughs> or how did you do that? What class did you take to learn that right there? Where can I go? I will ask in a heartbeat. I will ask in a heartbeat. But a lot of us, we're too prideful to even ask. We have too much ego to even ask. And if that's you, you got to ask yourself why. You don't even... <laughs> Y'all Google or, t or damn near tell you anything. Go on there and Google it then. Go Google it. You ain't got to ask nobody nothing. Just Google it then. Research it. But you don't have to be envious. That you're not, your life is not worth envy. Like that is not something that God gave you. That is, that is an emotion that came into your life somewhere through something. And it caused to take root in your life and you're operating from whatever that root cause is. And I don't have enough time to go into that, but it's operating from a root cause that's been sold into your life and you're operating from something. It could be as a result of rejection or you not being seen or you not being heard as a child or an adult or whatever. It could be from anything like that, which is causing you to act in a way or have this type of behavior or emotion and when we envy we can't resist comparing ourselves to others see we don't we won't say that when you envy you're really comparing yourself it's a competition like pastor diana put in the comments it's really a competition and you're really comparing yourself to someone else think about it Think about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary said, mm -hmm. think about it. It's really a comparison. It's really a comparison. You are really dealing with negative, a negative self-perception and you don't know how to achieve your own happiness. Marcy said, could stem from repeated failures? Yes, it sure could, Marcy. But even though we try and we try and we try and we don't succeed in a certain area, it still does not give us the right to hate on somebody else who may have get, got it or done it. It's still no reason for that. And we have to really look at why we 
have that behavior or that unpleasant emotion of of envy you know we we have to, i sit up in church sometimes and you can see the envy like i have set up in church and watched things happen and you can just see the envy in some people you sitting up in church you're supposed to be there to get equipped and fellowship and just be a light and you in there just envy how they say it's written all over your face you can't even control yourself it's in your eyes you can't clap you can't lift your hands like really <laughs> really <laughs> it got you that locked up to where you can't praise God because you're looking at who's singing or who preaching or who taking the offering or who giving a testimony or who God is using, whatever it is, who leading the song, like it, it don't matter. And you, it got you locked up, like Marcy said, and just stuck. Ask yourself why. Why are you drinking this poison hoping that they die? Because envy is going to make you sick. And I read something that said je jealousy is a terrible disease. Envy is a terrible disease. And it's going to make you sick. It's going to make you sick. It's going to drive you crazy because you don't have to do that. So how do you overcome envy? What are some ways that you feel like people can overcome envy? Give me some of your ideas in the comments. How do you think some people can overcome envy? I know for one, you got to deal with what you feel from the inside. You got to first acknowledge that the way I thought about this person or the way I that was a little envious. You have to take ownership and you have to acknowledge the fact that you have it or that you did it or whenever it arises, take ownership of it and ask yourself, why do I feel like this? Or why did I respond that way? Or why am I looking at her like that? Or why does she have me so locked up just because she walked in the room? You know, you gotta ask yourself that. We And, and a way to overcome, um, I'm gonna type it in because I wanna see some of your questions. Some of your answers i'm gonna type it in the comments what are ways to overcome envy and i think some of the ways that we can overcome envy is just think about your qualities like what are your qualities like what are you good at versus comparing and looking at everybody else all the time what are your qualities this will help you overcome it what um what are your your negative thoughts. What are the negative thoughts that you're telling yourself? And why? See, a lot of times we, we tell ourselves negativity. We speak negativity to ourselves. And our voice is the loudest voice we're going to hear. And self-deprecating de thoughts will make you envious of other people. So the area that you are being negative about yourself, you're seeing in somebody else. And it has that adverse reaction because now you feel less than or you don't feel confident in what you're seeing in somebody else. And because you haven't addressed that area in your life, now you're envious or you seek with it secret iniquity or a little hatred or jealousy. We, we can't just allow that to just fester. We, we can't. You have to address those things and you have to build your own self-confidence. You have to. So if you see someone or you, the person that you are comparing yourself to, what are you comparing? And that's where you have to build yourself up in that area. When we um, are looking at somebody, I'll, I'll put it like this. Our envious thoughts can come internally. Internally. When we remember something. Or it can come externally when we see something. Think about it. When we when we see, when we become envy about something, it can be an internal envy when we remember something, or it can be externally when we see something. It can turn on that envy button. Both are a reminder of an unhealed area of our life, and it's triggered when we encounter something or someone that reminds us of a wound or a hurtful place, a hurtful memory. Somebody said, what is a, over, a way to overcome envy? Self-forgiveness. Yes. Yes. 
whatever you feel you need to forgive yourself in that's causing you to envy, yes, write it down. I'm a big journaler. Write it down. Somebody else said, Marcy said, try to connect with the person you're envious of and learn from them. Yes, that would be an opportune thing to do if we could, if we're not prideful or we're not too shamed to admit. That would be awesome. But just thinking about it, when we get those uh, envious thoughts, whether they be internally when we remember something or externally when we see something, they still all remind us of an unhealed per part of our life that's triggered when we encounter something or someone that reminds us of um, an unhealed area or reminds us of a wound or a painful memory or a hurtful place or something that we try to do that we failed at. Um, if y'all see what I'm saying? It all points back to us and why we're why we're envying. What does envy look like? Type that in the in the comments too. What does envy look like? Uh oh, I didn't put a question mark down there. What does it look like? Like I put in my post earlier, you know, do you have that that eye roll or that face scrunch when somebody walked by or that mm, how does it look when it's when it's quiet and it's subtle? How does in how does your internal envy look? Mm, yeah, that's good. Y'all need to write that down. Like what does your internal envy look like? When you, that you don't say, that you don't show. What does it look like? What do you tell yourself? What are you saying in your head when something reminds you of an unhealed area of your life? You don't, you don't, you don't realize that it's reminding you of an unhealed area in your life. You don't know that. But that's what it is. It's reminding you of something that you didn't do or something that you wish to do. Something that you wish you had. Remember covetedness? See, yes. Yes. Envy looks like judgment. I'm not sure if I'm spelling that right. Yes. Sad and discouraged. Yes, it sure does. It also looks like criticism, y'all. Somebody's always picking something apart and criticizing people. Hmm. Could be envy. Could be jealousy. Always criticizing. Always got something to say. Ain't nothing ever right. Nothing. Nothing ain't never right. Could be envy. Can't get nothing good out of their mouth if you try. They find stuff to be envious about. Nothing a person can do is right because they're so envious. Again, envy is a painful emotion at the sight of someone's good fortune, success, happiness, beauty, shape, marriage, possessions, whatever. It just pains you and you just can't get over it because of your own unhappiness. Your own unhappiness. Your own unhappiness. There is also a inferiority envy is when you see someone doing something that you think you can do it's all it's all types of envy and it still boils down to something a weakness or an insecurity or something within yourself so if you find yourself ex you know with these different behaviors and attitudes. I think up here in my notes, um, it said that, I'm trying to find that where it said it was a very negative, say it was a very negative and unpleasant emotion, you know, that causes you to want to bring down another person, you know. So I said I wasn't going to be on here long, and I hope this is not long enough. And like it, even covetedness, when I gave the definition of covetedness, 
is a consuming, highly competitive, evil attitude, which will cause you to behave in ways, you know, that you shouldn't. It'll cause you to sow discord. It'll cause you to try to change somebody else's mind about somebody. It causes you to do some stupid stuff and some ungodly things. So my prayer tonight with this, with this subject, Envy, is hopefully you can recognize any areas in your life that you are dealing with envy that you have dealt with envy um, and begin to ask yourself why why am i hating on this person why am i jealous of this person why am i coveting my neighbor's items and possessions and things like that why do you know this person when she walks in why does why do i get tight why does it change my whole mood? You see what I'm saying? And if and if you haven't experienced this, hopefully um, bringing light to it tonight will stay in your mind. So if you ever find yourself dealing with anything like this, you can recognize it and check it quick. And check it quick. Again, benign envy is 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 a is when we recognize another as being better or having more or having something that I desire or a look or what have you, but it inspires you instead of making you negative. It inspires you to be better. It motivates you, you know, um, it encourages you to, to do the same or do better or, or level up or boss up. It inspires you. But what happens when we don't allow it to inspire us it turns into the unpleasant emotion and you know that's not healthy it's not healthy for you it's not good for your system it's not good for your heart it's not good for your mind it's not good for your thoughts it's just not good for your life and you don't deserve that you deserve to get to the bottom of why you have this this negative emotion so if you find yourself envying someone or being jealous of someone or secretly hating somebody or anything, please check it. Please check it and ask yourself why and ask God to reveal to you the root cause of it because if you can get to the root cause of it, it stops all the action. So you deserve it. Um, you're strong enough to um, acknowledge it. It doesn't, acknowledging your areas of weakness is not a sign of weakness. It's not failure. Acknowledging that you have dealt in envy or you deal with a little jealousy that is not a sign of weakness that's we're human we're human and we have to live and learn every day we have to practice that being better every day and we deal with so much that we pick up things um and just i'm just so thankful to god because god will reveal to you the areas that you have to work on and he's not god is not into embarrassing us he'll show you if you watch and if you listen He'll show you. And hopefully this live tonight is showing you an area, if you're dealing with this, if you're dealing with envy, if you're dealing with jealousy, hatred, com comparisons, you know, it doesn't always have to be a bad, bad thing. But if it's running your life, if it, um, if you find yourself always comparing yourself to others and then you look at yourself and you don't feel like you, you're good or you're worthy or, you know, it just makes you feel a sense of sad and depressed and you really 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 have to address that because that's not we we all have a plan god created us all with a purpose and a plan and and if if you feel like you can do your own ministry on facebook then do it watch me what i'm doing or ask me or watch somebody else and do it just jump on out there and try it try it i've been at this for a long time a long time and I failed a lot of times a lot where I thought something would be and it wouldn't and ooh, 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 and then I saw people going and doing it and I'm like well I'm supposed to be doing that too that dog it you know but thank God I was able to not allow it to cause me to be malicious or envious or jealous or anything like that you know, I, I support other women. I, I support it, you know, and we have to get to that place because it doesn't define me. It's a motivator, you know. So if you find yourself um, dealing with envy or jealousy or hatred or 
or comparison or low self-esteem or stuff like that, please pray about it and, and ask God to show you the root cause so you can begin to to heal um, in, in these areas. And if you don't deal with it, write this stuff down so if you ever come across it in your own thought pattern, in your own thought life, you can recognize it and realize, like, okay, that ain't right. That ain't right. So, again, I pray something was said on tonight um, that impacted your life. Um, I'm appreciative to all of you for joining in and, and conversing back with me, Marcy and Isabella, Pastor Diana and Jamara. I appreciate you all. I can't see if anybody else is on here. So if I miss anybody's name, please don't hold me, hold it against me. Um, and I just thank you all for your support. Keep praying for your girl and she continues to step out and I will be back next Thursday. And next Thursday's topic is self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is next Saturday, next Thursday um, is self-sabotage. That's something else that was in some of those boxes um, that the ladies put in at the Empowerment Brunch. So I'm going to talk about self-sabotage next Thursday at 8 o'clock right here on the same channel. So please feel free to share this video, encourage others to listen and jump on. I hope to see you all next week. Um, also, um, please be prepared if you don't have your ticket um, for the for my PC Ministries Find Your Fight um, Empowerment Sessions starting October the 20th, Thursday, and Friday, October 21st at the Coco Civic Center. These are going to be two empowering nights um, equipping us with finding our fight in our mind, body, and soul as we deal with insecurities, as we deal with infirmity, sickness, depression, grief, guilt, all of this stuff that has us so weighed down and that we just beat down by the issues of life and things and we just we just can't fight. We can't even lift our arms. If that's you, you need to find your way to the Civic Center on October the 20th and the 21st at 7 p.m. each night to be empowered with me and my friends. We're going to be pouring into your life. We're going to be praying for you um, and you're going to leave up out of there like the warrior that you are. So find your way. Go on Eventbrite. I'll put the thing um, in the comments there the link um it's a free event but registration is required for seating um and registration we, we need to know how many is coming for for a few things that we're planning so i hope to see you on october the 20th and the 21st at the coco civic center go to eventbrite to register and i will see you then so i thank you all for tuning in tonight i appreciate you all and i will see y'all with pc ministries live thursday night live next thursday with the topic self-sabotage and also on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on the same PC Ministries page is my breast cancer support group where we're just talking about breast cancer. Tuesday was an awesome night and we just talked and laughed and cried and shared and, and all of that. So if you know somebody who's dealing with breast cancer, newly diagnosed, been diagnosed, they've beaten it, they're a survivor, or they've been affected by it, it doesn't necessarily have to be breast cancer. It could be anything. Tell them to, to join in on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock um, for this chat. Um, it was very supportive, and we're there to be a support. Um, we don't have all the answers, but we just something that I've just decided to, to try and support one another. So Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock, Breast Cancer Support Group. Next Thursday, PC Ministry thir Thursday Night Live, topic self-sabotage. Thank you all for tuning in, and I pray that you all have a wonderful evening and an even better weekend. Love you all.